Hello everyone. We are here with Professor Ludus Ortega, IATEFL plenary speaker from day one. It is a great honor to meet you personally and to have the opportunity to talk to you. Please tell us, how did you enjoy the experience of the plenary? I was thrilled. I was thrilled to come to IATEFL for the first time and to have the opening plenary. Uh, that allowed me to connect with all the participants right away. And it was a very large room. <laughs> I was also being um, projected to the rest of the world. I forgot about that while I was doing the plenary. And um, so I was more uh, concentrating uh, at looking around the room. And it was just so many people and I could sense that they were listening with care. And um, I felt really supported, very friendly. Um, environment, so I, I had been already told that IATF was a very friendly conference, and it's totally true. So it was very enjoyable. How does one prepare to present uh, a plenary for such a large audience, yeah. especially when the topic is research? Yeah. Well, research is my topic, so uh, talking about research and what it means to uh, understand research and to try to work with research ideas for your own classroom and teaching, I do that every day and I talk about that with my students every day, so that's not a difficult topic for me. I have a lot of opinions uh, about it, which I shared with the audience. Preparing for a plenary is, is usually a lot of work. You want to do well, you don't want to waste your audience's time. And, and you want to both entertain, persuade, um, at least plant the seed of some new idea or some new challenge um, that, that people will not forget immediately and that they will try to pursue later on after the conference is over. Um, so it's a lot of hours of work preparing for it, uh, but it's worth it. You um, mentioned after the conference. What was the reaction after the plenary? What kind of comments did you receive? Well, first I got a, a, a message from a friend who lives in the United States on Facebook telling me that Twitter was <laughs> talking about the plenary a lot and I don't tweet so I couldn't really see what was happening but apparently the reaction was very positive and uh, so I was pleased about that. But then I got stopped by a lot of people asking me, for example, how do I find research? You know, like they were saying, I'm a teacher, I'm interested in keeping up with research ideas, or when I have questions to go and look up the research, but I don't know how to find it, and I have no access through my institution, through my school. And so I had thought about teachers having difficulties with research because it's time consuming and they're so super overloaded with, with their own teaching time. Um, I also thought oftentimes we researchers write in a really complex way that is off-putting and jargonistic. So sometimes I thought, you know, teachers are gonna have difficulty just reading and enjoying and understanding the readings. But I had never thought about the issue of access in terms of um, having to pay if they want to have access to research. So that was a very important insight that I got from comments uh, afterwards, after the talk. Yeah. Turning to your Q&A session, mm -hmm. did any important issues crop up there? Did you have an interesting discussion with the audience? I did. I, my impression was that um, the people who came, and it was a full room, I think it was the more research-oriented audience um, at the conference. Uh, they came to follow up, and many of them were asking what kinds of resources and strategies can uh, workplaces have in order to make research more integrated in the life of teachers and I kept insisting that research is neither good nor bad really. It's just a matter of whether teachers want to pursue research either by doing it or by reading it. When a teacher has a thirst for research and they feel that their teaching life would be happier with some access to research or some involvement in research, then it's very uh, counterproductive to their own happiness and, and teaching quality if the workplace doesn't um, make uh, resources available and time and incentives available to let them do that research enga engagement. But there are the teachers who don't feel that way and I don't think that, that the workplace should impose on them an obligation to keep up with research or to get involved in research. I think it should come from the teachers and it should be done at an individual level, but with institutional support. 
This is really exciting, useful, and also inspiring. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to share with the Aya TEFL audience? Um, well, I think it's important to uh, think about research in very creative ways and think about what research uh, can help us answer some questions and what research should be sort of ignored when it's too immature, too incipient, too ambivalent. Um, there are many other sources of knowledge for teaching that we can go to. But I also, as I said in the, in the talk, I'm very convinced that there are some areas of research producing knowledge that really can transform challenge and perhaps transform to some extent the way we teach. And it's, it's about topics that are very controversial and very complex and difficult, like age and multilingualism. Um, but I think it's very worthwhile not to not to turn the back on that research um, because it really is the kind of thing that, that may eventually make us teach slightly differently, not completely differently for sure. Professor Ludo Sotega, thank you very much. It's been an honor and thank you for your time. The honor is mine. I've been very, very happy interacting with Ayatefo.